everyone, welcome back to my channel. I already had my follow-up trauma center appointment for post-surgery, and now I'm about to have my OB appointment to check on the little baby. Thought I would make a video talking a little more in depth about my surgery. I think I was so disconnected from everyone that I didn't really talk about exactly what I went through. I don't think people really know the severity of it all. And then I'm gonna talk about, you know, what I learned from it, what I think everyone could take from my experience, and I mean, what I plan on doing to, you know, improve my health in the future. So for people that know me really well, I've always had stomach pains, at least since college. So for the last like seven, eight years, I was, studying abroad in Spain. Um, I ended up in the ER out there because I was having such terrible abdominal pain. Couldn't figure out what it was. So over the last seven years, I've just tried to change my diet. There have been times where I cut out meat completely. I cut out just red meat. I cut out dairy, gluten. Um, the list just goes on and on. I would literally limit so many things in my life it would be how much spice I could take on my food, what kind of foods I ate when I was out with my friends, um, what kind of alcohol I would drink, how much alcohol I could drink, which isn't bad. It's not bad to limit, you know, certain things in your diet, but mine was so extreme. I would always wonder, is tonight gonna be the night that I wake up with severe stomach pain? At first it would happen about once, maybe twice a year. But then this year, after moving to Tennessee, it happened a lot more frequently. Started out being like once a month to it being weekly. I remember when we were in California, my pain was so bad that, um, you know, I'm on vacation visiting my friends and my family. And my stomach pain was so bad that I just laid in bed for the last week of being there. It was, miserable. You know, there were so many times I couldn't even take care of Aria. I couldn't get up to brush her teeth. So two days before surgery, I was at my job. But this day in particular, I was ringing someone up at the cash register. And I just remember when I was bending down to grab a shopping bag, it this sharp pain just hit me. And usually it happens when I'm sleeping at night, but this in the middle of the day was not normal. I ended up leaving work that day, had no sick time. I just uh, told my boss like, I can't do this. I got up and left. To the ER, like all the other ER visits I've had in the past, which have been, you know, dozens of ER visits. They do the same thing. They do an ultrasound. Um, everything was good with my kidneys, gallbladder. So they basically just said, you know, here's some, here's a prescription for some like Tums, Pepsid, Pepsid, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Pepsid, and they sent me home. I was still feeling horrible the next day, so I went to my OB. I called and had a last minute appointment, and he said, you know, you're in a lot of pain right now. You're 14 weeks pregnant. You are crying. You need to go to downtown Nashville, and you need to go to the hospital down there because they have specialists and they will figure out what is wrong. And I said, okay. I don't even know how I drove home. I drove home, told Jared to take me downtown. And you know, the entire car ride, I'm just like leaning on the car. I'm, you know, I'm pissed off. I'm nauseous. I walk as fast as I can into the ER and I'm in so much pain. When I walk in, I just like collapse. I cannot walk. You know, they did the same thing. They did the ultrasounds. We're trying to avoid an MRI and a CT scan because I was, because I'm pregnant. You know, it got to the point where they weren't finding anything, so we had to do that. They did find an absence in my intestines. They just said, we're gonna go into emergency surgery and we're gonna go in there and find out more about what's wrong with you and we're, we're gonna fix you. I mean, you know, I wasn't scared I wasn't scared about the surgery itself. You know, what really broke me down was they said, when we go into surgery, they're going to be able to track my heartbeat. 
you know, just to make sure I'm doing good, but they're not going to be able to track the baby. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, that was the hardest part. I totally understand that I'm their priority. I'm their patient. Um, but I had, you know, I already exposed my unborn child to radiology, which can, you know, affect her later on down the road to go into surgery and to not have her monitored was, um, news that no one wants to hear. <laughs> so I go into surgery a couple hours later, I come out. Obviously my first question is I like, how's the baby? It took a while for me to hear the heartbeat, but as soon as I heard her heartbeat, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a really strong, really uh, feisty <laughs> baby on my hands. That's all movement. Wow. Here she's awake right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> 150 is low 160. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I got so, so lucky. Um, I think I was at the perfect stage in my pregnancy because I wasn't too early to where, you know, the scans would affect uh, her development because her brain and everything important was already developed in the pregnancy. But I wasn't too far along to where, you know, she was taking up my entire stomach because when they cut into my stomach, it's literally from like my scars from the bottom of my chest all the way past my belly button. <laughs> So I got extremely lucky that she was still down low. So I had a small bowel resection. I think that's what it's called. They took out about a foot and a half of my intestines. I know this sounds really gross. Um, and then they also took out my appendix. I also got lucky, in my opinion, I got lucky. I was born with a strange anatomy. Everything was backwards. So instead of my appendix being to my lower right side, which is closer to the baby. Um, my It was actually at my upper left side of my body. I mean, my thought process, I'm like, well, that's good because um, they were able to remove it without being too close to um, the little baby. How I describe myself pre-surgery and um, right after surgery, I tell people I was like, from the movie The Exorcist. I'm screaming at the nurses, I'm crying, I'm just like moaning in pain. I'm literally banging on my hospital bed. When you see people in movies that are, like I felt like I was in a mental institution, which I totally, I understand people in that situation now, because I definitely became that person. I think I rarely yell in my day-to-day -day life, um, not a, a loud voice <laughs> that's just not me so for me to be so like rude and pretty mean to the nurses um, I know it wasn't my fault because I was just in so much pain but now I I understand why patients are like that and I also understand a little bit more about what nurses go through what saved my life my pain was like a 20 out of 10 I I would rather push out quadruplets than go through that kind of pain again. Uh, where was I getting at? Oh my God, I get off topic all the time and I'm out of breath. I, I pretty much refused to take pain medicine. I was just so paranoid about everything that I was putting in my, my body that was going to the baby. So what they did, what we all know now is safe for a baby is they gave me an epidural. Epidural was um, higher up my back so it was numbing my upper abdominal which is where all the pain was and where I had my surgery. It wasn't really affecting the baby, it wasn't numbing the baby at all or anything down there. The epidural saved my life. It, I had it for five days. Um, best five days of my life. I was happy, I was talkative, I um, after a couple days, I started getting up and walking around very slowly, but I was walking around. I'm walking. Take Dad hates when I do this. Take it easy. <laughs> okay, that's good. And then, you know, I thought I was going to be out of there in a couple days. 
boy was I wrong. I ended up being in the hospital for about two weeks. I was there Christmas day, which was, <sighs> oh man. I don't wanna seem, you know, pitiful because I know there's, you know, there's people with cancer that spend months, years in the hospital. There's people that have it so much worse than me. But it was just, um, it was just really, really hard to be in the hospital on Christmas and being away from Aria for so long because she wasn't allowed at the hospital. And um, I'm so lucky to have Jared as a partner because he brought her, he didn't even ask, but he, he didn't even ask any of the nurses, but he brought her on Christmas day down to the lobby. So I was able to go down there for like about five, 10 minutes and see her. I get emotional every time I think about it. Good morning. It is um, Christmas Eve. I've been here for seven days, which means I will officially be here for Christmas Day, which I was really upset at first, but I'm just grateful to be feeling better, to be breathing, <laughs> um, and that the baby is okay. And I'm just gonna hope that I get out in the next couple days. Come on, me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool! Mm -hmm. Thanks! You guys can do your vlogs and all that cool stuff. Oh gosh, is this my present or Aria's? That's yours. <laughs> and Aria's. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. That, that's a great brand, too. Starting on Christmas and a little bit after that is when my depression really started to kick in because at that point I was there for a whole week. And I was expecting, you know, my recovery process to be a lot faster because I am young and I am healthy and I ha have been active my entire life. It got to the point where I wasn't answering anyone's phone calls. I wasn't even looking at my phone, checking text messages. I wasn't watching TV. I would put on a movie for when Jared and, or my mom was visiting. Um, my best friend bought me a book and you know, I read that for a couple days and then it got to the point where I put the book down, put my journal down, and I just stared at the walls of my room for, for hours, like hours would pass and I would, I mean, I remember, you know, the, the daily chart right in front of my bed and I would pick out little flaws, um, like it really bugged me that uh, the date was incorrect on the board. I would look around the room and memorize, you know, like, it sounds so dumb. I would memorize like the cracks in the wall or like just like little flaws everywhere. And I would just, I was just so, so angry. Never want to get to that place again. So I'm trying to remember every day to be grateful. Sometimes I do catch myself not being completely grateful every day for what I do have and I have to remind myself like Megan you don't want to go back to that place where you were in the hospital and you were at your lowest lowest point honestly the highlight of my every single day was when Jared came to the hospital and then when Jared wasn't there my mom would come visit but I became so not only dependent um, but attached to Jared, like I counted down like the hours, the minutes until he would get to my hospital room. And when he told me he was leaving, um, I would just have a breakdown every single day. He really took care of me, you know, um, I didn't brush my teeth, I didn't 
brush my own hair. I didn't bathe. I didn't do anything because I was so depressed. And not only that, I had a tube going from my stomach up my throat through my nose, um, basically just dumping out everything in my stomach because I wasn't eating for, it was technically over two weeks that I was there. Um, so, you know, I was just super fragile, super frail because I lost about, I think it was like 15, 15 to 18 pounds or something ridiculous like that. I couldn't even drink anything. So my, my lips were just extremely dry. Jared had to help me wash my hair when I was in there. When I got home, he had to help me shower. He had to help me, um, he had to help me do everything, get dressed, um, go to the bathroom. We take so much for granted. We don't even realize it. And even now it's like, sometimes I'll forget, like I should be happy taking a sip of, you know, this drink that I made. Like I should be so happy. And I need to remind myself of that every day because, um, okay. So my camera died mid cry. <laughs> so I got myself together a little bit. Yeah. I, I forget to be grateful. I think a lot of us do. I just want to let everyone know, you know, appreciate the meal you're eating, appreciate, you know, taking like a drink, being active, going on a walk, going on a run, um, playing with your dog, playing with your kid, appreciate your spouse. That is something I definitely learned. <laughs> I think Jared would be happy uh, to hear that right now, but I do, you know, I'm like, I'm not a loud personality, but I'm a very stubborn uh, partner in a relationship. So I'm trying to be a little more soft, a little more understanding. But yeah, so I think it's, I don't even know what day it is. I got out of the hospital December 28th, I believe. And today's January 15th. So I've been out for like two and a half weeks. You know, when I first got home, it was still really difficult. I still can't eat too much food. That's why I've been drinking a lot of Herbalife shakes, just because um, it's hard for me to hold food down. I haven't really been eating many things that have like skin on it, like like chicken or apples, salads I just started eating recently. Anything that's um, easily digestible is what I have been trying to eat or anything that's a little bit softer. Organic uh, bone, chicken bone broth is so good. That's what I have been having a lot. Just wanted to share a little bit about that. Um, I wasn't expecting to get as emotional <laughs> as I did. Um, I'm like all snotty, I feel like a mess. Two and a half weeks later, I'm walking more. I am able to breathe now because when I first got out of surgery, I could not breathe. I was literally like, <laughs> um, so taking breaths, yeah, let's be grateful for that too. That is probably the number one thing and then being able to eat and drink. And I got so lucky, we had a lot of family that um, helped us and watched Aria. So Jared was able to visit me since she couldn't come to the hospital. His Aunt Serena stayed for a week. His parents came into town. My mom came to visit me every single day after work. And the hospital is like over an hour away from her. We just got really lucky. And I also got really lucky that we were in Tennessee and we were at a hospital that is known for their surgeons and um, people that specialize in, you know, high risk situations such as what I went through. What I'm gonna do for the future is I am trying to, you know, continue to eat healthier, but I'm so happy that I no longer have to worry about, um, oh, is today gonna be um, the day that I have this pain in the middle of the night? Do I have to, leave hanging out with my friends early because I'm just so uncomfortable. My stomach feels so uncomfortable. Yeah, so I'm really happy to see um, what my life is like when I am able to pick heavy stuff up or be a little bit more active. I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be home with Aria. Like, <sighs> okay, I'm not getting emotional anymore. <laughs> But you guys have no idea. Like I'm, I'm so, so excited to um, move on from here and hopefully live a better, healthier lifestyle.
If you guys actually watched through this whole video and made it to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Everyone that sent me messages, just know even if I didn't respond, I did read them. Um, they did put me in a better mood and if I didn't respond, I, I'm so sorry. It was, you know, my mental and physical state wasn't the best. Really, really, really appreciate it. And um, if you're going through anything similar, or your parents are going through anything similar, or if someone you know is in the hospital, um, feel free to talk to me. I, I totally understand what it's like to be in their shoes. Um, I now understand what it's like to be in your shoes. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm about to go into my OB appointment because now I am 18 weeks and I will give you guys some updates on my little girl soon. Make sure to share, comment, subscribe, like, or um, just watch and enjoy. And, I don't know, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. All right.